With the cost of pop often cheaper than water, it may not be surprising that about a quarter of Canadians are obese. Until recent decades, added sugar was never a national concern. After World War II, sugar became widely available for commercial use and moderation went out the window. The food industry has added processed sugar to all kinds of food, from cereal to salad dressing, bread to yogurt. All these harmless seeming foods are polluting our bodies as we unsuspectingly gloss over the labels. Glucose, dextrose, fructose, lactose, maltose, or sucrose, no matter the name, sweeteners are in almost every packaged product on the grocery store shelves. Consumption of the sweet ingredient has tripled worldwide in the last 50 years. According to Statistics Canada, Canadians are eating the equivalent of 26 teaspoons of sugar every day, which accounts for about 20% of their daily caloric intake. The World Health Organization suggests it should be about half that number and only five teaspoons a day should be made up of added sugar. What it boils down to is Canadians are eating approximately this much sugar every week when really they should be eating this much. A recent report published in the science journal Nature suggests that sugar is toxic and ought to be regulated in the same way as alcohol and tobacco. The groups rallying to rein in sugar intake say there should be a minimum age put on products, especially drinks with added sugar. What um, I think seems to probably make the most sense is actually put a tax um, per volume of sugar. So that would mean that a higher sugar drink would have more tax on it than a lower sugar drink. Mark McGill, one expert, says the availability of processed food is a real health threat. Many of those products are, are, have little or no nutritional value. Uh, so if you're consuming um, a high amount of those, it means uh, that you're, you're most likely not consuming other uh, healthier uh, products. While doctors and nutritionists worldwide are likening added sugar to poison, producers of sugary products say a tax could be bad for business. Any sort of tax on sugar would probably hurt the business in that people would spend less money because they like the, their candy budget would, would go wouldn't go as far. Canada has already imposed a small tax on certain sweetened foods, but the research says the cost of sweetened foods would need to be doubled to impact consumption. A Quebec coalition is trying to get the federal government to enforce a new tax on soda and energy drinks to help fight Canada's growing obesity problem. Only in Quebec, if uh, we have only one penny a liter of uh, tax on uh, soft drinks, for example, we will get $8 million to invest in prevention. Healthy eating groups around the country insist obesity prevention efforts should focus mainly on children through better dietary education and instilling healthy eating habits. Victoria Beacock is the head chef at Elmwood School. I definitely think it's key. Just because if they don't learn it now, then they're not going to change their eating habits later in life. The changes proposed aren't radical, but it may still take a great deal of work to convince food manufacturers and Health Canada to start regulating added sugars. For now, though, it might be wise to put down that Coke and pick up a cucumber. Emily Rack, Capital News Online, Ottawa.